Hello, in this lecture, we will define book value of bonds. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. According to Fundamental Accounting Principles, Wild 22nd Edition, the definition of book value of bonds is net amount at which bonds are reported on the balance sheet equals par value of the bonds less any unamortized discount plus any unamortized premium. When we're considering the book value of the bonds, we're saying what's the value of the bonds that will be reported on the balance sheet net of the premium or discount. Therefore, what is the premium or discount? How does it get there? And how are we going to report these bonds? When we're considering the bonds, we usually think of bonds in terms of us purchasing the bonds, oftentimes in terms of investments. However, we are considering the bonds in this case as if we are a corporation who is issuing the bonds in a similar way that if we needed cash flow, we might issue some, have a loan and have someone loan us money. The difference between bonds and a loan in order for a company to receive financing has to do with the idea that when we have a loan, one of the things we usually change in terms of finding a, an agreement, a market value of the loan will be the interest rate. Uh, but in terms of bonds, the interest rate is going to be stated on the bond. So if the interest rate is stated on the bond, it's not the thing that we can then change in order to find market value in order to get an agreement. Therefore, we got to do something else. So the things that are fixed on the bonds we can think about are going to be the face amount and the interest rate. What could we then change? We can change the amount we're going to receive for the bonds. So in this case, we're going to say the bonds have uh, a face amount of 240,000, meaning to, uh, we're going to issue them. Uh, we're going to have to pay back, I'm sorry, $240,000 at the end of the bond. So you would think under a normal financing, we would receive at the front end 240,000 and then have some format of interest that would be charging. That would be the normal loan setup. However, in this case, we're not going to adjust the interest. What we're going to say is we will pay you back 240,000 at the end. We'll accept something greater or different based on what the market is at this point in time. And in this example, we're saying, hey, we have an interest rate of 6%. If you could go somewhere else to the market and get something greater than that, say 8%, then you're not going to uh, receive our bond. We're not going to be able to sell our bond unless we do it, unless we sell it for less than the face amount. So that's going to be the case here. That would be the case of a discount. We'd sell the bond at a discount. If, however, the rate on the bond happened to be higher than the current market rate, then the person loaning us the money uh, would not be able to do as well somewhere else. Therefore, we would have a lot of people that would want our bonds. Therefore, we would say, hey, we're going to give you the bonds at a higher price at a premium. So if we were to record this particular bond, we're going to record it at a discount. So we're going to receive something less than what we're going to pay back at the end. So there's the cash we're going to receive. How would we come up with that number? We would, we would go through a calculation to do that. I'm not going to go through the calculation at this point in time. All I want to know at this point in time is that the cash we would have to receive is less than the bond payable that we would have on the books that we would have to pay back at the end, resulting in this debit of the discount on the bond payable. When we record that, obviously we're going to get cash. That's why we're issuing the bonds. The payable goes on the books, representing the fact that we owe it back at the end of the bond term at the face amount, 240000 Then we have the discount on the bonds. That's going to be the 41516 in this case. Therefore, when we think about the bonds, the book value of the bonds is going to be the 240000 at this point, minus, in this case, the discount of the 41516. It's kind of like the real value of the bonds, because, of course, that's what we sold it for at this point in time, 198,484. Now, of course, in some form or the other, over the life of the bond, in this case, 15 years, 
we're gonna have to reduce this or allocate out this discount so it should be at zero by the end of that 15 year time period so that we're paying back just the principal of the 240,000 in this case. And therefore, the discount on the bond is going to, to be expensed in the form of interest expense. And that makes sense because really the difference here, this, this whole discount is in place because of the difference in the interest rates, because of the difference in the uh, stated rate and the market rate. Now, if we were at a premium, then this would be a credit here and we'd have to add them together. We would have received more money than uh, what we issued the bond for and we would have to amortize that premium over the life of the bond again leaving us with the 240 in this case face value of the bond that we would then pay back at the end of the bond period.